All right, that's good. All right, so I've had a bunch of stuff sitting in my garage that's been needing to be installed. However, they're also not the kind of items that require its own video. So I figured I'd just lump them together. They're all very simple, like easy to install, but also really random. You know, a lot of the stuff that I've installed and reviewed on this channel are pretty common. Things that we've wanted, things that we've coveted, but we sometimes overlook the random stuff that might actually be useful and that is the kind of items that I have here. Don't want to go into it too much. Let's just jump right into that list. This is the Tuffy Security Under Seat Lockbox. Finding ways to store things, especially conspicuously, is a plus. This just gets mounted under the passenger seat and I don't think I have to tell you what kind of things you can store in here. It's also lockable and this opens up and you got lots of storage on here. The only downside about this, and I know that it's a safety feature, is that you can't take the key out when it's unlocked. So you basically have to lock it up all the time. In the event that you need to reach for that particular item, you're gonna have to get the key out first, unlock it, and then open this thing up to grab what it is that you need in those scenarios. These brackets right here just attached to the existing seat brackets. Uh, the bolts for those are a bit difficult to remove because they're deep, they're thicker, and they have some Loctite on them. But if you have an impact wrench like I do, it makes removing them a lot faster and easier. Now for added security, if you're worried about somebody breaking in and just unbolting these and then taking the entire box with them, you do have the option of bolting this down on the floor of your Jeep. You just find out where this hole lines up to, drill a hole through the floor of your Jeep and then they give you the hardware to attach that. The good thing about this is that they can't get to this bolt when the drawer is in and locked. So that's an extra security feature. They won't be able to take this at all. I personally am not going to do that. I'm just not keen on drilling a hole through the floor of my Jeep. But for those of you that want to do that for extra security, you can definitely do so. So outside of drilling that hole, this is going to be a really easy install. These brackets here, this is going to go underneath the seat bracket on this side and then on the other side it actually goes on top of the seat bracket and you just put your bolts right back on. Let me show you because yeah this will take like five minutes. And that's it. See, super simple. It took me maybe no more than five minutes to put this on. Plus, super secure. I can keep a lot of valuables in there and keep it locked up. And it's also really inconspicuous. From the outside of the vehicle, no one will ever know that there's something underneath here. What's also awesome is if you have Tuffy's other products, like their drawer systems and lock boxes, you can have your key rekeyed to fit all of them. So you have one key to open up all of your Tuffy branded products. Yeah, man, I'm a fan. You'd be surprised how many people need something like this and didn't know this product existed. I actually found out about it from my friend Brad at Overland Roost. If you've seen my Jeep, I have the long Midland bull bar antenna on the front bumper of the Jeep and it looks awesome. But every time I need to work in the engine bay, that humongous antenna is in my way and I wish I could fold it down without having to take it all apart. Well, this solves that problem. Here at the bottom, you have a 19 millimeter bolt. You can attach this to your bull bar, roof rack, wherever it is you want to put it. You also have four additional holes here. If that middle one doesn't work out for you, you have four smaller ones. You basically can mount this wherever you want, man. Right on the side here, you'll see all these holes. This allows you to 
basically angle this whichever way you want you just take out the little wing nut that's on the side here and then once you get that off and you just pull the little tab here and now you can orient this any way you want in any of these holes that you want but what i really like about this whole thing and what sold me on this to begin with was here at the top instead of just giving you a hole to put your antenna through they actually notched the hole out so for a lot of you who have antennas now and you don't want to have to reroute cables super easy just slide it on through here tighten it and you are good this is made of steel and it's very robust i mean your antenna is not gonna shake i've gone through trails i've gone through highways and that antenna is not shaking at all All right, up next is the mod that I am the most excited about, but coincidentally is also the mod that made this video post three weeks later than it was supposed to, and that is mounting a propane tank. Earlier this year, we switched to the five pound propane tank. If you're still using these little green bottles, like stop. First of all, these are super expensive. A pack of six for these are like 60 bucks. Meanwhile, a five pound propane tank, five bucks to refill. Plus, after you use this, you end up having to throw it away or recycling it, get rid of them, and switch to the five pound tank. Only issue is when you have a five pound tank, you have to find a way to mount it. There's a bunch of companies that make a bunch of different brackets. For example, Front Runner has a bracket that you can put on the roof rack and it'll strap on to that. And then also AT Overland, if you own a Jeep, they have those brackets that get attached to your hardtop to the side and you can mount this on that as well. But for me, I wanted something that I can move between two vehicles. So I wanted a, a way to make this portable but stay on the outside of the vehicle and I think I have a solution. Now what you see here is that solution. You don't buy this as a kit but I think that once you see this, I think a lot of you might like this a lot. So let's start with actually holding the propane tank itself. This is the Power Tank 5 pound propane tank holder. This is from Power Tank and this just showed up at my doorstep, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes ago. This is what has held up this video. More on that later because there's some stuff I want to talk about. But you need one of these and then you're going to need this, which is totally separate and not even made for propane tanks. This piece is what's going to hold this piece. I was at Overland Expo West and I was in the Max Trax booth and the distributor for Max Trax is Adventure Imports or Overland Kitted and they had this at their booth. And what this is, it's a strap that goes around your spare tire and you put this on this strap and then you buy their other plate that attaches to this so you can mount your Max Trax. But when I looked at this, I said, well, why does it have to be Max Trax? Why can I put a propane tank on here? In fact, you can put anything on here because there's a bunch of slots. So if anything, anything you want to mount to your spare tire, this would be the kit to do that. I like this idea a lot because it's a temporary mount that we only put on when we're going overlanding and camping and otherwise it doesn't have to stay on the vehicle.
And there you go, a temporary way to mount your propane tank so you don't have to carry it. Every single day you can take this on and off, this spare tire, and this thing is rigid. Like this is not going anywhere. We just have to figure out what to do with this strap right here. I'll probably get like Velcro or something to keep this tied up at the top, but I'm loving this solution a lot. I'm sure a lot of you will like this as well because you don't have to keep the propane tank permanently on your vehicle. You can keep it at home and only strap it up when you're going out but stick around till the end of this video because we need to talk about this power tank holder a lot that's all i'm gonna say all right so we know that in this off-road space ambers are like the thing amber off-road lights amber ditch lights amber fog lights amber light bar the word on the street is if you use amber lights at camp for your scene lighting it's supposed to not attract as many bugs as white light might. On my last trip, I remember opening the door to my vehicle to get something inside the fridge and of course the dome lights inside the vehicle turned on and as soon as they turned on, all these moths just kind of came in and started hovering around the light and I'm like, how come we don't have amber lights inside the vehicle? I mean, if Amber lights are supposed to not attract as many bugs, then I would just assume that it would be a good idea to have it inside the vehicle too, so you're not getting an influx of just pests coming inside. So I went to Amazon and I typed in amber LED light bulbs and I was surprised to find that they didn't just pop up, like I had to do a deep dive to find them. But I did, and I'm gonna be installing them in the Jeep today. Now the company that makes these bulbs, they're super random, I have never heard of them. This one is Yokim, and this one's Alopee. Really weird though, because the slogan on here says, nice product, change perfect. I, I, have, I don't even know what the hell that means. But these are the companies that made the ones I bought. I had to buy two different kinds because on the Jeep JK, there are two different kind of LED bulbs inside your dome lights. You have two dome lights in the Jeep. The one in the very back requires the Festoon style bulbs and these are your 578s. And then this one is the 921 and this one goes in the middle uh, dome light. You need two of these as well. These are true amber LEDs. They're not like just a bulb with like a orange film over them. Super cheap, like $10 a piece. You can just grab these now and, and change up the entire look of the inside of your vehicle and hopefully not attract as many bugs every time you open the door at camp. With the Forerunner, we go ground camping. And if you've ever mounted a tent, like a ground tent rolled up to your roof rack, then you know that you have to really cinch it up, make sure it doesn't slide around and it's, it's an awkward shape. These help keep your rolled up tent in place. These just go on your roof rack like that. And then you put your tent on there. You could feed like ratchet straps through here get it around, cinch up your tent, and it's not going anywhere. It just keeps everything nice and organized on your roof rack without you just trying to get your tent up there and, and cinching it up and bundling it and it looks messy. This just makes it look a lot neater and a lot cleaner and it holds it in place. There are some holes down here and because we have a T-slot system on our roof rack, then we just have to put some bolts, slide it onto the rails, and then tighten it down and there you go. Let me show you, super easy. And there you go, five random mods that you probably never thought about but are super easy to install, I'm talking less than 10 minutes, and are game changers in their own right. Now, you could stop here, I mean the video's done, or you can stick around and hear me go 
on a little rant. So I need you guys to know before I talk about this that I highly debated whether or not I would discuss this in this video. Is it worth burning bridges with companies that I could possibly be working with in the future? But then when I thought about it and what the goal of this channel is, I, absolutely yes. It's worth that risk if I am putting you guys first. Because at the end of the day, this channel exists because of you. And the companies that I've had the greatest pleasure of working with are the companies that truly understand that. I needed a propane tank holder for this video. So I did what I always do. I went straight to Amazon to look for what options are out there. And there weren't much, at least not in the way that I wanted to use it. The only one that I saw would fit this application was from Power Tank, but I thought, great, because I love Power Tank stuff. We all know who Power Tank is. They're pretty reputable. They're the ones that make those uh, air tanks that you can buy instead of having an air compressor. So I went to go look to buy it, but it said on there that it wouldn't arrive to me until late October, and that's just too late. So I went directly to Power Tank's website, and it said on there that they're available to ship immediately so I bought it from there and I bought it on Thursday September 21st now I needed it quick so I paid for priority shipping with USPS which was one to three business days now remember I ordered this on Thursday so I'm expecting to get it one to three business days maybe Monday Tuesday maybe Wednesday later that day I get an email that said that a tracking uh, number was created and that the product arrived at their facility so I'm like awesome come Monday which is the 25th uh, it still hadn't moved the tracking still said it was back at the USPS where they dropped it off at I said all right I'll give it another day we all know how you USPS can be sometimes Tuesday came, still nothing, it still hadn't moved. Wednesday came and it still hadn't moved. So I call Power Tank directly on Thursday and I, I get this guy and he said, all right, let me check the tracking number. He checks it and he said, yeah, it seems to still be stuck at the USPS here in town. I don't know why it hasn't moved. And I said, okay, well, what can we do? He said, well, I can send another power tank out to you. Uh, same shipping method. It's Thursday right now, so you, you should get it on Monday. And I'm like, well, I kind of needed it for this weekend because I had a trip planned. Is there anything you can do? Like maybe get it to me faster? He said, well, you didn't pay for faster shipping. You paid for priority shipping. And if I spend to get it to you in one or two days, I would just lose money doing that. Uh, so I, I'm not going to do that. And I said, okay, I, I get that, right? But I did pay for three-day shipping and I, I never got it. And he said, well, why are you blaming me? You act like it's my fault. It's not my fault. And I, and I said, I understand it's not your fault. I know that you sent the product when you were supposed to. It's all stuck at USPS. I know that's not your fault. I'm just looking to see if you can make it right. And he said, well, you should have done your due diligence. Why didn't you call us on Monday when you noticed the tracking number hadn't moved? And I said, well, because that happens with USPS sometimes. Like sometimes they don't update their tracking. It just says like it's on its way and that it's been dropped off and then before you know it, that day you, you get it in the mail because I never updated it. So I just waited a couple of days to see if it'll come in. It never came in, which is why I was calling now and I'm letting you know that it's not here. What, you know, if you can do something, that would be great. He said, well, like I said, you spent for priority shipping, so I'm gonna send it to you in priority shipping. And I said, okay, well, I paid for priority shipping, but now I'm not getting it till you're saying Monday, which would now be what, 11 days from the time I ordered it, am I gonna get a refund on that? He said, well, what I'll do is I'll go to USPS, file a claim, and then I'll give you the difference of what you would have paid for regular shipping and what it cost you for priority shipping. I, I'll give you that difference once you know I file a claim with them, but I don't know when they'll come back to me because we know how USPS can be. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm not gonna argue this. Uh, just get it out to me on Monday. He said, all right, well, I'm gonna send it out today. You'll get it on Monday. So Monday comes and I had never gotten an email with a tracking number or anything, but this time I'm not gonna wait to call. So I called him on Monday. I get him again. I said, hey, I uh, just wanted to double check. Is that tank on its way here? I never got a tracking. And he said, 
oh man, I, I never sent it out on Thursday or Friday. I We had an expo to go to in LA. Things got kind of got caught up and I had a note on my desk and I never processed the order. Uh, I apologize. I, I'm going to go and send it out today. And I said, same shipping method, like priority shipping one to three days. He goes, well, yeah, that's what you paid for. I said, yeah, but it's now going to be what? Two weeks since I was was supposed to get to, it's been 11 days so far. And now I'm, you're going to send it same method again. And I'm going to have to wait now until what? Thursday, which is two weeks. And he said, you yeah, know, well, you're blaming me again. And it's not my fault. I said, well, now it is your fault. Because on Thursday, you said you would send this to me, and then you failed to do that. You failed to send it off because you said things got caught up. That's fine. People make mistakes. We forget things sometimes. I do the same. But you, can you admit that you did something wrong and you should do something about it? At this time, I am blaming you, and this time I am upset. Because this time it's all on you. And he said, let me, let me talk to someone. Let me see what we can do. Hang on a second. He puts me on hold. Comes back on. He said, all right, I'm going to get this out to you. We'll send it through UPS if you are okay with that. And you'll get it on Wednesday. Does that work? And I said, yes, fine. So Wednesday comes. I still didn't get a tracking number or an email. And so I call them back again. And this time I get someone else and I said, hey, I just want to check up on my order. He said, yeah, we do have a tracking number here. Uh, Let me give it to you. So he gives me the tracking number. I hang up the phone. I look it up. He put it for a week. So he sent it out on Monday, but he didn't do the two day shipping where I was going to get it on Wednesday. I was going to get it the following Monday. Like this is ridiculous. That would be what? Two and a half weeks since I ordered this thing. So I called immediately back and this time I got a lady. I told the lady what was going on. She looked up the account and she said, oh my God. And she literally stopped and she was like, oh my God, I, th- th- this is unacceptable. I am so sorry. I am going to send this out right now. I'm going to take care of this. You will get it first thing tomorrow. And she sent it out. She sent an email confirming, gave me a tracking number, even called me and said, hey, this is where I'm at and I just want to let you know it's been sent out, you'll get it tomorrow. That's how it should have been done since the beginning. She took it upon herself that, you know what, you were supposed to get this, I'm going to get it out to you. I'm going to get this out to you like right away because this is what you paid for. And today, like an hour ago, the product came in. Product is great, fits great, quality is awesome, but that's the thing. You can have the best product in the world, but if your customer service is horrible or you're a company that kind of acts like you're too big to try to take care of your customers, that's a problem. And I've had issues with big companies before that I work with now because they made it right. I don't blame Power Tank as a company. The lady who I spoke with last pretty much saved the face of that company for me. But that doesn't mean that they don't need to look internally at some of their operation processes. Somewhere in the middle of our conversation, he said, well, what do you want me to do? You shouldn't have to tell a company what to do. You should be able to call them, let them know your situation. They look it up and say, you know what? This is a problem. I'm going to fix it. You don't need to tell me what to do. I'm going to make this right and go above and beyond. But the minute they say, well, what do you want me to do in this exasperated voice? Yeah, you're not going to get anywhere with those kind of people. And it's sad because I really like Power Tank. Like I looked at their stuff in the beginning and I coveted some of their air tanks before. And now it's like... The one guy just put a really bad taste in my mouth. I mean, the company could be great, right? I mean, the lady was awesome, but that one interaction was just enough to make me like, I don't know if I'd ever want to do business with these guys again. But I'm going to stop now before I get too riled up and start throwing out expletives. But yeah, not a good look on what happened there with just a simple propane tank holder. How was it? It was a $130 part. And I went through 
all that. But anyway, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please make sure you smash. Actually, don't smash. Get a tracking number for that like button. Subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so we can let you be aware of new videos when they come out. And if it moves you, support us on Patreon. It gives you access to all of our live streams and also gives you access to our videos before anyone else. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I should post that part. Yeah, f*** it. Let's do it.